Microsoft Whiteboard also supports loop components. So in Microsoft 365, I can have these components, they're called loop components, where I can put a component onto different Microsoft 365 applications and people can interact with that component no matter which of the applications they're using. So for example, if I go onto my Microsoft Whiteboard and choose loop component, I'm going to choose a task list. So we're going to create a task list for the hike that we're going on and I'm just going to pop that onto the whiteboard. So the loop component will be built, it'll be created, but it's not being created on the whiteboard, it's being created on my OneDrive, it's being created on my, my SharePoint site. And you can see here I've got a loop component, it's got a name, I could add a title to it, and if I look here at the loop component and click this hyperlink, it'll actually take me to the browser for my SharePoint site and you can see small components so I can stay in sync. It gives me a little bit of a, a list of you know what are some of the things that I can do with Loop. It's a very useful tool and you can see here now that I've got Loop, uh, loop Task List and Loop Task List. If I go and add the title here on the browser, so Hiking Supplies, you can see that the exact same thing that I'm typing on the browser appears on the whiteboard and vice versa. If I go to the whiteboard and say we need to get boots, I can put that on there. I can even assign it to a specific person and I can you know, choose a date for it. So let's pop into today's date and you can see all of that will show up on the loop component that's in the browser. But beyond that, I can do even more. I could go into the loop component. You can rename it, by the way. Right now it's just called Loop Task List 2. I could go and call this uh, Hiking. So we could rename this to our Hiking Task List. So we'll call this Hiking List or Hiking Tasks. So we'll put that in there. And now you'll notice that the name changes not just here, but also it'll change on the whiteboard. So I've gone in and changed it here and you can see my loop component here. It'll change it. It might take a few moments to, to change the name. So underneath here, I've got the hiking task. And if I go into sharing, I can share it through a link in another application. So for example, I'll grab this link and I can choose who can share it. So I can choose people to share it with. So all of these people would be able to come in and they would be able to work with it. So I've got the copy link. I'll go into Microsoft Teams and I'll start a new post. And, uh, you know, let's, uh, maybe the post will be, let's make a hiking list. And then what I'll do is I'll pop the loop component in here. So we'll just paste in the link and I'll post that in there. And you'll notice now I've got it on the whiteboard. I have it in the browser underneath where I can control it in my, well, in my OneDrive. And notice boots and the name hiking supplies is there. And I also need some food for the hike. And notice when I typed it in, it actually immediately went through in all three areas. So I have food, food, and food in all three areas. And I can assign a new task and I can say tense. And notice that every area where the loop component is being used gets that update. So this is very useful within the whiteboard because I know that this component can be used elsewhere within my Microsoft 365 subscription. I can go in and do, there's a few different components that I can put in here. There's tables and voting uh, tables. And all of those, once I put them onto the whiteboard, can then be further extended and used throughout the entire Office 365 subscription and different Office or Microsoft 365 applications. So loop components are very useful and it's a neat way to be able to collaborate across multiple applications, not just one application. People can use whatever their preferred application is with that loop component embedded in it.